was going to say, you flew over from England yet last night. You said I you just got, got in, in about an hour before that thing, and then I went to bed and I didn't scare sleep. So yeah, well, I was going to say, jet lag is crazy. I'm feeling like I can go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we all love the. I think we all love the movie, right? We all love the movie. We thought, thought it was really good. Really enjoyed it. I am. Yeah. New York. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the same store uh, Amy does over there too. The same one. Are you visiting or you there No, I live here. I lived here about seven years. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I really can. I was just saying, better energy than on if, no, if nothing else, weirdly enough, I feel safer here than I did in London. Yeah. When you say that, I was my wife is not going. You never think New York is friendlier than London. Yeah. America is a. You understand this a little bit, but then you guys probably take this for granted, but America really is a land of opportunity. And yeah, it's really you're not pigeonholed like in England. You're literally yeah. from the way that you went to school, how you speak, the way you dress. Just bang, you're in the box. Most of the time. I mean, some people think they're pigeonholed. But they do it to themselves. Yeah, a lot. Here, yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, I know, but I'm from a bad Tell that to the girls that move to England and they'll come back here. Yeah, I mean, I'm from the greatest neighborhood. I've been Jackson Heights and Queens, and it's like developed more now. And then I moved back to Staten Island, and I'm right in between two like straight and like that. All right, you just go to work. You make your own opportunities, definitely. You're allowed to. Yeah, yeah. Well, the other thing is that it's a Oh, yeah. Is we're, we're bred with an idea of disappointment. Like, we're bred not to even necessarily try because it's not going to work out. That's what you hear all the time. Yeah. Successful in England. Yeah. Well, do you think, is that why you were saying, like, this is like, very, like, English because he has the thing about the silver spoon thing, like you were saying, and he's like, oh, no, you can't have an opportunity. Like, I didn't find that so far because that's, you know, a lot of people can do that and then come from something or not. In England, you really can't. Yeah. I mean, you can't. There are people who do it. Yeah. 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 Right. And I watched them, they're being all the pompous old guys going, ah, just throw them away, and lock up the keys. So I was like, why is nobody asking them why they're doing it? And um, I got to the charity, which took these kids to the movie sets. The idea of like the uh, the anarchy or the uh, subversion of the movie, like a lot of the subversiveness you do at the end, that's more quintessentially English in a way as well. Like you wouldn't necessarily get an American filmmaker doing that the way you did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I can only do what I know. Right. Or, you know, I, I make movies. I have one rule when I make a film. Would I enjoy it? Right. I just imagine I am the audience. Yeah. Writing what I want to see, which may be a good or a bad thing, like a pretty mainstream commercial taste, but at the same time, it's mainstream commercial movies. That's the thing, guys. It makes a little bit more of an effort. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit factory filmmaking. So, um, so and we have budget constraints, you know, because it's an independent movie. Yeah. So we could not have. Um, yeah, have the money to do the huge action set pieces that uh, the big movies have. Right. Like, yeah, but the movie still seemed like it had more action than the comic. Yeah, because the way you made it slow motion. Mm -hmm. yeah, but what I do is get the action. It doesn't cost money to shoot people fighting. Yeah. It's when you're going to have a just doing this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
So if Dan Aykroyd was being played by Richard Pryor, yeah. it wouldn't have been him going, hey, I'm going to trade places with you. You'd be like, not quite as, as um, opposing. Russell Simmons. Um, you gotta ask Sam Jackson that because I didn't know who Russell Simmons was. Yeah. We did the movie, and someone said to me, God, that guy's yeah. like Russell Simmons. Like, who's he? Yeah. And I just went, oh, fuck. <laughs> um, I thought, this guy is gonna go ape shit. I mean, he's always got a great sense of humor. Yeah. So if it was based on him, that's all Sam Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Did he, but, the, did, he did he decide the list? Yeah, that was Sam's other idea. Yeah. And I know. It was a very similar moment to when Nick Cage did the, the, um, the Adam West voice, and that became the first one. So next day I got a crazy idea, and I sat there and went, yeah, I, said, yeah, I think we're going to go with it. And then when Sam did it, I was, I, I was scared of it. <laughs> Because you're, yes. you're the villain, like you gotta be taken like, seriously, you are just scary. And then I saw um, um, yeah. the guy from Syria, for his name. Yeah, he, well, you know, the yeah. guy he's yeah. bad, bad dude. Yeah. He's all this. Yeah. And he's being interviewed. And I was like, I was laughing, going, I'm not taking him seriously. This is bad. I think that was a great job. Well, in comics, they usually give the villain like something that they're overcoming. And you can't really put that in a comic, but they'll put him in a wheelchair or bald or something. So it's like, it's good that he had a like Napoleon well, uh, But that's what, exactly what Sam said. And then yeah. Sam used to have a stutter and a lisp when he was a kid. Too. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking, going, this Sam Jackson, is that a boy? A lot, of, a lot of actors did, though. A lot of actors have used it to overcome yeah. their. Uh, yeah, I did. I used to. I found that out. He explained the whole thing to me. Yeah. And when I was like, he went on that journey. I was like, great. You know, he, um, well, also, he played like you know, in Unbreakable. It's yeah. kind of like a sequel to his character. And unbreakable because he plays that amazing that comedy. Movie. Underrated movie. It's the best movie that um, Samuel's ever done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, said that. Everyone thinks I'm nuts. I remember. I said no, it's so much better than The Sixth Sense. It's so much better than The Sixth Sense. But that juicing part of The Sixth Sense ruined The Sixth Sense for me because the first two minutes he went, I think he's dead. Yeah, yeah. I think he's a ghost. And then when the twist came, I was like, thanks, dude. He didn't know. He together and. So how much did Colin Firth do? Like how much of that is Colin Firth? And yeah. Wow. We did a lot of it in one shot. Yeah. I'm so bored of Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. It's 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 funny. I mean, I love a lot about the movies, but a lot of people praised the Batman movies, and the one complaint I have is the fight sequences in those films. You can't tell what's going on. But in Kick-Ass and this, you can really tell what's and the X Men movie, but like you can really tell what's going on in the fight scenes. I mean, the one in the the one in the church, but also the one in the pub is just it's brilliant. It's amazing. Also, you can tell what moves he did. Like, is it fight by fight? There's not like an I just know that sometimes they've like CGI'd on a stunt man. You know, they put like actors' faces on a stunt man. I just was wondering what you've done. No, that's your scene. Everyone's gonna flip out of that. That's gonna be the worst. So watch it. Colin's action. Anyone can learn. You know, he's not doing backward flips, splits. Right. People with gadgets, right? Stabbing and shooting. So you just have to really learn. The poor guy. That's why he was shocked. Oh. I said, I said, he's doing, he trained for like three, four months of hardcore okay. stretching. And, you know, he's a fit or something. Oh. Oh. And, yeah. By the end of it, he's never been in the best shape he's ever been in his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of the things that didn't work out. No, of course. <laughs> like, what do you mean I can't have this? Yeah. Yeah. It's a pleasure. And the music nice you man. use, too. I love the choreography for the action scene. Over here, yeah. Yeah, no, really, because I met this young Democrat and I had a real proper conversation. And then our, we don't have a proper conversation. No. That's a British national party. We don't have that very right wing. I don't know how.
No, I mean we have we have the odd like crazy fringe party that wants. Right. No, 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 not at all. No. At funerals, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's what Red State was about. The movie Red State. They made one about it. Oh yeah, it was a Kevin Smith indie movie that he did called Red State, and it's it's about the Phelps family, and the Phelps family were one of those like God hates fags guys, which is crazy, you know. Uh, yeah, one of them is one church. They're just so loud that you think there's a lot more of them. Yeah. <laughs> See now that's that's the really English thing that the movie is that's what comes through for me as an English person. All the stuff you were saying about the class warfare and everything like that, that's completely true. But what comes through louder is the fact that an Englishman is more likely or an English person is more likely to say, ah fuck them than they are worry about that shit. Whereas I wonder if the releasing studio because you said like last night you made a comment about to the movie then or anything like that? Oh, I love it. Okay. Like Big Mac and everything. Oh, I love it. Happy show in the end. That was all so exciting. Do you get a bit of joy from that? Do you like, there's a little bit of that like warmth inside you? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the movie definitely, more so than any of the other films you've done, like this movie definitely reeks of that. It definitely, like that's why I said, it has like a kind of pleasantly like British anarchistic uh, subversive nature to it, which is... Yeah. There's a reason why it does well. That's, there's a reason why things like Marx Comics and Alan Moore sell better and are written better because we need that here. Yeah. We need that kind of voice. Everyone, everyone gives us a pussy. What's, in, what's incredible? <laughs> Two, two of the things that I think will do really well about it is first of all this country has great satire like satire is still having a boom here uh, like the Daily Show and then the new uh, John Oliver show which is funny enough he's another English guy and so on they're big big things and people like a lot of people get their news from them now like that's the big thing but the but the other thing is is that and I know this from my friends and talking I'm on the internet so like a lot of friends I have in America the Anglophile thing is big now you've got Doctor Who you've got Sherlock you've got Downton Abbey you've got a whole bunch of stuff that's huge huge here there's a, there's a bar in Brooklyn that's just a Doctor Who bar yeah called the Waystation yeah. so like when you were saying about the English thing I was yeah but I was saying when you were saying about the English thing I'm like the studio have no worries like English is big not only that but the majority of the movie is kind of a James Bond thing and James Bond has always done well here so Yeah. Yeah. But you didn't need to know anything to go into it. A lot of people liked that they didn't have to read the comic 
dive into it. Which is, I, I, I kind of like, oh God, read the room with that. But yeah. 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 anyone could feel welcome to. You know, people are like, wow, I can't believe I like a raccoon. Yeah. Yeah. Something I like that. I thought I was feeling emotional about a tree. Yeah. 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 That's just yeah. one word. Yeah. yeah. Party, everyone was invited to. It was really neat done. I thought I liked it. I thought it was, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it was. You don't have to like the convert to like it. Yeah. It, but it took you, I mean, when I was a kid, like, like, very important to me to see things. It took me away from everything. Yeah. I yeah. escaped. And it was overwhelmed. Yeah. And that's what I hope you would. That's what I want to do with Kingsman. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. You're forgetting about it. Oh, it does. Or your dog died. Whatever the fuck bad happened, you forget about it. It's pretty good. It's also really surprising, and I put, put this in the thing I wrote last night, but that it's... I said that it appeals to the kid in adults rather than just appealing to more kids. Do you know what I mean? Because like most movies we all go and see now are mostly for kids. Right. But this is for adults because it's full of swearing and scenes and various violence and other things. But it's for the kid in us. Every kid though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. I'm so desensitized now. Little, little 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 kids coming into by Walking Dead comics. I'm like, what? You know they come. Or even they turn out like this is a Joker cover and they like Batman and they're going to buy Alan Moore Killing Joke and it's like, no, he strips down Batgirl in that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you know you're realizing too, but it's a comic book. It's supposed to be for children. Yeah. That's what people think. But it's not. It's really tough for that now. Yeah, yeah. You guys want to take a picture? Yeah. Cool. Thank you.